Welcome. Welcome to those in the building and to those on Zoom. It's lovely for you to be with us today. Now, before we have our opening words, I'd just like to express our congratulations and good wishes from all the church to Jackie and Ken, who were married on Friday. Great news. Brilliant. Lovely. So that's a good... A good thing to start with, isn't it? So let's start with our opening words. Sing a new song to the Lord. Sing to the Lord all the world. Sing to the Lord and praise him. Proclaim every day the good news that he has saved us. Proclaim his glory to the nations. His mighty deeds to all the people. Let us pray. Was he a good man? A truly good man? Too many, Jesus was a lawbreaker and a blasphemer. They didn't think him good. He turned accepted standards upside down. Men and women stood aghast that he cared so little for ecclesiastical rules and traditions. And he cared so much for the outcast, the despised, the man whose business ethics were unacceptable, for the woman who sold herself as a monetary substitute for love. The medium is not always the message, yet medium and message were one in him. The question, was he a good man, becomes irrelevant. He overset the existing order and good became what he was. To this day, it is not a rule but an experience, not a code for living, but a life, not words, however carefully they may be chosen, but the word made flesh, medium and message in one. Let us all share in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be your name. Kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Does not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We're going to have our first hymn, which is Bless the Lord, O my soul. Bless the His holy name Sing like never before Oh my soul 
music like that. Our first reading today is uh, from John chapter 12 verses 1 to 11 and Debs is going to read that for us. John chapter 12. Six days before the Passover Jesus went to Bethany to the home of Lazarus the man he has raised from death. They prepared a dinner for him there which Martha helped serve. Lazarus was one of those who were sitting at the table with Jesus. Then Mary took a whole pint of a very expensive perfume made of pure nard, poured it over Jesus' feet and wiped them with her hair. The sweet smell of perfume filled the whole house. One of Jesus' disciples, Judas Iscariot, the one who was going to betray him said, Why wasn't this perfume sold for 300 silver coins and the money given to the poor? He said this, not because he cared about the poor, 
but because he was a thief. He carried the money bag and would help himself from it. But Jesus said, leave her alone. Let her keep what she has for the day of my burial. You will always have poor people with you, but you will not always have me. The plot against Lazarus. A large number of people heard that Jesus was in Bethany. So they went there, not only because of Jesus, but also to see Lazarus, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. So the chief priests made plans to kill Lazarus too, because on his account, many Jews were rejecting them and believing in Jesus. Thank you, Debs. Uh, Marion is going to read our second reading. This reading continues 12 to 19. The next day, the large crowd that had come to the Passover festival heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of, of palm trees and went out to meet him, shouting, Praise God! God bless him who comes in the name of the Lord! God bless the King of Israel. Jesus found a donkey and rode on it, just as the scripture says. Do not be afraid, city of Zion. Here comes your king riding on a donkey. His disciples did not understand this at the time, but when Jesus had been raised to glory, they remembered that the scripture said this about him and that they had done this for him. The people who had been with Jesus when he called Lazarus out of the grave and raised him from death had reported what had happened. That was why the, the crowd met him, because they heard that he had performed this miracle. The Pharisees then said to one another, you see, we are not succeeding at all. Look, the whole world is following him. Amen. <clears throat> Thank you, Marianne, for that. Very interesting words there to think about. Now, our next hymn is, O oh Lord, all the world belongs to you. Now, in this, it talks about how, how Jesus is turning the existing order upside down. So that's what we're going to sing about.
So once again, we cross paths with Lazarus, Mary, and Martha. In chapter 11, Jesus has just brought Lazarus back from the dead. Isn't that amazing? And now because of this, and how everybody knows he did this, he finds his life under threat from the religious authorities. In fact, anyone who knows where to find Jesus is under threat as well. So the question on the lips of those looking for him is, will he or dare he come to Jerusalem to attend the Passover meal? Will he risk being arrested to share in this festival? And today, we are starting with to look at chapter 12 in John's Gospel, and the questions are answered. Yes, he dare attend. And it is in this chapter that his public ministry begins as he enters Jerusalem, a triumphant Messiah. But for now, he quietly arrives at the home of Lazarus, a place of familiarity and good fellowship. Jesus is traveling with his disciples and in celebration of his being in their home, Mary anoints the feet of Jesus with expensive perfume, showing her love for him, which she has a right to. Just one of his disciples comments on the use of such expensive perfume, and that is Judas. That's not a surprise because that a lot of negative feelings are directed towards that name. Jesus defends her actions and mentions the prospect of his death. Now, Jesus was unable to stay unknown in Bethany. It was very difficult. The grapevine was alive. And so people came to look for him. And it is this public ministry which he begins. It's a very devised kingship. Some want to know more. Some people want to know more about Jesus. Ask questions. They're not sure, but he's got them. He's got them. He's, held, he's holding them, saying, what, we want to know about this man. Some believe and follow. They're welcome with enthusiasm, without question, say, yes, come and join us. And some feel threatened by the apparent quiet power and influence Jesus is excluding, plot his downfall. Now, have you ever come across someone who is very special? Someone who's charismatic? And some people are drawn to these people. Such words as loyalty, following, admiration, bravery, faith, Trust and justice can be attached to this sort of person. But there can also be a little feeling that there is something unknown about them, something that is not said or shown. Even Mary, who, who Jesus, even Mary, who loves Jesus, raises the issue as he come, didn't come earlier to save her brother Lazarus. We have a couple of slides. Two people, very well known. Martin Luther King, very famous for his civil rights campaign. There was a, bra a very brave man who did know that one day someone would kill him because of what he was trying to change. An amazing man. And people who were with him also were threatened. And the other lady is, do you know, this is amazing. This, I, I've heard of Emily Pankhurst, but do you know, I've never actually seen many photographs of her. And I didn't know she looked like this. So I thought maybe a couple of you are surprised. This is Emily Pankhurst. Again, big campaigns. Um, but they fought, and all the people that were with her went to prison and endured many 
of things in the name, in her name. They are real people, of course. But there's a program I, I do like to watch. It's, I don't know whether anyone watches it. It's Luther. It's, um, it's a, a detective, John Luther. Probably not many people watch it. It's a bit gory not out to everyone's taste, but it's a very good drama. And the character of Luther, who is fictional, is he commands loyalty. All his friends are loyal to him. He's, he's a little bit, he doesn't do everything by the book and that gets him into trouble. But all his friends rally round and get him out of trouble. He's a very special man. And he's, he does things with goodness in mind, but they don't always turn out that way sometimes. But the, if, if you want to watch it, it's a very good drama. And the character of Luther reminds me of these people. He goes the full mile to do things. And all his followers, all his people who work with him, they get pulled into his way of life, which is good, but can be a little threatening. And many more fictional, fictional characters, I think, who can be like that as well. Jesus, at this time, took a step back from his growing notoriety and the expectation of the people had in him. He was a healer, he was a teacher, a spiritual leader, but he also knew that people that surrounded him were not fully aware of who he, had, he was to become. They did not understand did the disciples really know Jesus? I don't think they did fully. I think they followed him. And I think they listened to his parables, but I don't think they quite understood everything, really. And I don't think they understood what was going to happen. Did they understand at that time the things he said and the role they played in his life, even after his death? Well, not really. There was lots of words said, but I don't think they quite grasped it. But they did, and it was an amazing thing that they took on and they became his disciples and they were saved. We're going to have a little break from a sermon and have a hymn. The kingdom of God is justice and joy.
our third reading at this morning is from John chapter 12, 20 to 26. Steve is going to read that for us. Uh, this part of the passage is entitled, Some Greeks Seek Jesus. Some Greeks were among those who had gone to Jerusalem to worship during the festival. They went to Philip. He was from Bethsaida in Galilee and said, Sir, we want to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew, and the two of them went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has now come for the Son of Man to receive great glory. I'm telling you the truth. A grain of wheat remains no more than a single grain unless it's dropped into the ground and dies. If it does die, then it produces many grains. Whoever loves his own life will lose it. Whoever hates his own life in this world will keep it for life eternal. Whoever wants to serve me must follow me so that my servant will be with me where I am and my father will honour anyone who serves me. Amen. Thank you. So now for this triumphant entry into Jerusalem, Jesus rode on a donkey, not quite the grand entrance, but this fitted with the humble nature of the rider. Do not be afraid, city of Zion. Here comes your king. Here comes your king. There we are, the words. He's saying, yes, I am that person. I am your king. Jesus presents himself to the people who had come to meet him. He presents himself as their king and saviour. Of course, not everyone was pleased this has happened. It proved to fuel their intention to stop and arrest him. The Pharisees, the priests set their plan in motion. Now, I don't know whether any caught the news this week. This desire to stop dissenting voices is still prevalent in our world today. In any place where a less than fair democratic system is in place, leaders of opposition parties may be arrested simply because they threaten the outcome of an election for criticizing policies. One such example this week in Hong Kong, Jimmy Lai, who runs a newspaper, Apple Daily, and many of his staff have been arrested and charged with colluding with foreigners by the state government, breaking a security law. This done to uphold a law brought to suppress oppression. Their bank accounts were frozen. And this week, um, they've had to totally close down the paper, that was it. They've won the authorities. So it does take a very special person, a brave person to challenge something that is wrong. Can we see similarities with Jesus and the place he finds himself in? In the third reading, Jesus speaks about his death through the use of Again, a parable. If a single grain is put in the ground and dies, it produces many grains. Many disciples and followers, all set free because of his death. Those who love their life will lose it. And those who hate their life in this world will keep it for life eternal. Whoever wants me to serve must follow me so that my servant will be with me where I am and my father will honour anyone who serves me. Those words speak of a life with Jesus. 
It is, places before them the truth to come, that to be a follower of Jesus, we need to lose something, lose ourselves. But in doing this, we gain so much. Those who cannot do this will never truly believe and be a follower of the Lord. Their mind, their eyes remain shut. And that simple grain, I believe Jesus was talking about himself, that he had to die in order for everyone to be saved. Amen. Let us share in our prayers of intercession. Lord Jesus, you accept and value us just as we are. Do not let our feelings of weakness or disability, our fear of the frailties of age, our bitterness and resentment mar the lives we offer you. Forgive us when we fail to live as fully as we might. Forgive us when we think more of, the dis of our disabilities than our possibilities. Forgive us, Lord, we pray, and make us whole. We pray for the following of the church into which you have called us. You call us to be loving, caring people, putting the needs of others before our own reflecting your way of life in the world. Often we fail you. We fail you through fear, through short-sightedness, and through sheer lack of faith sometimes, that your way really does work. Forgive us, Lord, we pray, and make our fellowship whole. <clears throat> We pray for men and women in the wider world, including those who never pray for themselves, for those weighed down with sickness and disability, for those suffering prolonged pain, for those who feel isolated and lonely, for those who are conscious of having made a mess of their own lives, for those who long for healing of body, mind and spirit. And we pray for all those people in the silence who we care about in our church family who need our prayers. We offer these our prayers in your name, Lord. Amen. Our final hymn today is Cornerstone. Christ alone. Yeah. 
He is Lord of all. He is our Lord. And may the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with us all today and with all those we have placed before the Lord today. So go in peace and take the Lord out into the hearts of the community we live in. Amen.